because there's no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. A water seen fire, land, sea, and water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universes. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction of the three modes of nature. Appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual, although they are unreal. And therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. And therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representations. I meditate upon him for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Projita Kaitravotra. Dharma Projita Kaitavutra. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Paramo Nirmasaranam Satam. Vidyam Vastavam Atravastu. Vidyam Vastavam Astravastu. Shivadam Tapa Trayon Mulanam. Shivadam Tapo Trayo Mulanam. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Kimba Purir Ishwara. Kim va paririshvara. Sadyo hridi avarudya tetra. Sadyo hridi avarudya tetra. Kriti bhi susu subhistakshana. Kriti bhi susu subhistakshana. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in the heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The, the highest truth is the reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagav Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. Is sufficient in itself for God realization. Is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of the other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kaputaror galitam phalam. Nigama kaputaror galitam phalam. Sukumukad amrita dravya samyutam. Sukumukad amrita dravya samyutam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur aho rasika bhuvi bhavuka. Muhur aho rasika bhuvi bhavuka. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. The mature fruit of the desire tree of the Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. Shinvatam swak 
Kata Krishna, Shambantam Sakata Krishna, Punya Shravana Kirtana, Punya Shravana Kirtana, Hediantak Stohi Badrani, Hediantas to Hiabhadrani, Vidu Nati Surit Satam, Vidu Nati Surit Satam, to hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures, to hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures, or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita, or to hear from him directly through Bhagavad Gita, is itself righteous activity. It is self righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna. Even one who hears about Krishna. <clears throat> Lord Krishna who is dwelling within everyone's heart. Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart. Acts as a best wishing friend. Acts as a best wishing and friend. And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. And purifies the devotee who is constantly engaged in hearing of him. Nasta praesu bhadresu. Nasta praesu bhadresu. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhakti bhavati naistiki. Bhakti bhavati naistiki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. And this way, devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. As he hears more about Krishna from Bhagavatam. And from the devotees. And from the devotees. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajastamo bhava. Tadarajastamo bhava. Kamaloba dayaschaye. Kamaloba dayaschaye. Chete etarivan anavidam. Chete etarivan vidam. Stitvam satve prasiddhi. By development of devotional service. By development of devotional service. Of the Lord. Of the Lord. I'm sorry. By development of devotional service, one becomes fixed. Uh, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. By development of devotional service, we become fixed. And thus, uh, lust, material lusts and avarice are diminished. And thus material lust and average are diminished. Evam prasana manaso. Evam prasana manaso. Bhagavat bhakti yogataha. Bhagavat bhakti yogataha. Bhagavat tattva vijnanam. Bhagavat tattva vijnanam. Mukta sangha se jayate. Mukta sangha se jayate. When these impurities are wiped away. When these impurities are wiped away. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate <laughs> Thus, Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection. Thus, the Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection. And enables one at once to come to the stage of a samsayam samagram. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. Understanding of the supreme absolute truth, personality and of Godhead. Understanding the supreme absolute truth, personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 16. Verse number seventeen. Seventeen, yeah. Tais Yaivam Vartamanasya. Taishivam Varlamanasya. Purvesam Vritim Anvaham. Purvesam Vritim Anvaham. Nati Dure Kilas. Charyam Nati Dure Kilacharyam Yada Sitani Bodame Yada Sitani Bodame Translation by Srila Prabhupada Now you may hear from me of what happened while Maharaj Prikshit was passing his days hearing of the good co -op, good occupations of his forefathers and being absorbed in thought of them. So there's no purport, we'll go to the next verse. Dharma padai kina charan Vichayam upalabhyagam Vichayam upalabhyagam Pritchati smashruvadhanam Pritchati smashruvadhanam Vivatsam eva mataram. Vivatsam eva mataram. The personality of religious principles, Dharma, was, 
Oh, no, it's, I'll just read it. Yeah. The personality of religious principles, Dharma, was wandering about in the form of a bull. And he met the personality of earth in the form of a cow who appeared to grieve <coughs> like a mother who had lost her child. She had tears in her eyes and the beauty of her body was lost. Thus, Dharma questioned the earth as follows. <coughs> Purport by Srila Prabhupada. The bull is the emblem of the moral <coughs> principle and the cow is the representative of the earth. When the bull and cow are in a joyful mood, it is to be understood that the people of the world are also in a joyful mood. The reason is that the bull helps production of grains in the agricultural field and the cow delivers milk, the miracle of, of aggregate food values. The human society therefore maintains these two important animals very carefully so that they can wander everywhere in cheerfulness. But at the present moment in this age of Kali, both the bull and the cow are now being slaughtered and eaten up as foodstuff by a class of men who do not know the Brahminical culture. The bull and the cow can be protected for the good of all human society simply by the spreading of Brahminical culture as the topmost perfection of all cultural affairs. By advancement of such culture, the morale of society is properly maintained and so peace and prosperity are also attained without extraneous effort. When Brahminical culture deteriorates, the cow and bull are mistreated and the resultant actions are prominent by the following symptoms. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Glory to Srila Prabhupada. So, this is extremely important. Of course, today the modern scholars, I call them skull brains. They have, they're supposed to have the brain in the skull, but it's actually empty. It's full of empty air, or not even empty air, it's a vacuum between the two ears. And they just spurt out a bunch of nonsense all the time. So when they hear that if you protect the cow and the bull, the bull is the principle of morality and the cow represents the earth, but she's the representative of peace and prosperity, they just laugh and say, are you kidding? I eat the cow and the bull. So, so this, this is how low class and how despicable and disgusting these people have become. And of course, there's chaos in society. There's, uh, yes, that was over the weekend, uh, 13 people were shot in New York City. And in uh, Chicago, six people were murdered uh, just on the weekend, right? And another 30 or 40, 20 or 30 people were wounded because of gun violence. And New York is a gun-free state. And New York City is a gun-free city. It's almost, almost impossible to get a legal gun in New York City. But yet, there's gun violence all over the city. It just shows that the whole thing is a hoax. And people just put Band-Aids <coughs> on the problem that don't really solve any problem because they don't go to the root of the problem. The root of the problem is, first of all, that the leaders of society are a bunch of, uh, of uh, lusty and greedy and ignorant people. Therefore, they're misleading the people. And they're always putting a Band-Aid on the problem or kicking the bucket down the road. Uh, and therefore, no problem is ever solved. It just gets worse. So, uh, to understand the uh, auspiciousness of protecting a cow and a bull, as explained in a very nice book, booklet here that I have from the uh, Tirumala Tirupati Devastan, uh, Temple of Balaji, or uh, Venkateswara. And it explains a lot about the cow. 
and the role. Uh, for example, it says, the benefit of giving a cow in charity. So it quotes a Sanskrit mantra, and then it says, giving a single cow in charity may yield the benefit of donating a thousand cows. If one were to give a Kapila cow or Kapila govu in charity, it helps in conferring salvation on seven generations of the family. It is said in the Shastras that our forefathers can cross the fearsome Vaitarani, Vaitarani Lake if we give a cow in charity. So the Vaitarani River actually is separating the material world from the spiritual world. Then another verse, Sanskrit verse says, the calf must be given in charity along with the cow. While giving a cow in charity, it should be seen that the cow giving milk and the calf drinking must not face the same side. In other words, the one who gives a cow in charity and the one who receives it must face each other. This suggests that the charity of a cow can make one happy in this world and the other world. The donor is blessed and his forefathers will also come to occupy the holy other worlds. So the charity of a cow is preferable to other kinds of charity. And then the benefit is circumambulating a cow. Once uh, Lord Brahma called for a big competition among those who desired to marry Ahalya, whom he created as a symbol of beauty that stunned all the worlds. Along with all the gods, the Para Brahman, who could give moksha to all, in other words, Param. Supreme Personality Godhead and Lord Vishnu who could give moksha to all in the, in the world, participated in the competition along with Gotama, one among the well-known seven rishis, the Sapta rishis. The sage Gotama circumambulated the cow instead of the earth as per the Shastra and married Ahalya in a traditional marriage. Circumambulating the cow is equal to circumambulating the globe. <coughs> so, also, pregnant women have an easy delivery if they circumambulate the cow. <clears throat> and then there's no absol ab absolution or there's no forgiveness for cow slaughter. Vinayaka promises his mother that he will free her from the rivalry of another woman as, as the wife of Shiva. So he wants to send Ganga from the tresses, from the hair of Shiva to the earth. He knows Gotama alone can transform heaven into earth. He disguises Parvati's ma maid into a cow, asks her to go to the farms and start eating away the crops. Unable to put up with this, Gotama tries to frighten it with a twig of grass and the cow dies. People blame Gotama for killing the cow. Gotama approaches Vinayaka, that's Ganesh, and asks him to tell him how he can be absolved from the sim. The former tells him that he, if he can make Ganga in the hair of Shiva flow onto the dead cow, his sin will be absolved. Ganga who flows from the hair of Shiva has come to be called Gotami. It is said in the Skanda Purana that nothing is holier than the Ganges, the Gita, the Kapila cow, the Pipal tree, and service to the ascetics and the observances in connection with Ekadasi. The Skanda Purana says that if cows or Brahmins were to be touched with unwashed hands, the servants of Yama will burn their hands. In the Vishnu Purana, the story is told of an individual who suffers from the pangs of hell for a thousand years for obstructing a cow from drinking water seven births earlier and who attains his salvation only with the arrival of a holy man or the association of a holy man. So anyway, there are a lot of different histories in the Puranas and the Upanishads about the glories of the cow. Uh, there's another one, the Gopad Mavrata. Among the Ekadasis, the one that falls on Ashada in the waxing fortnight is very special. This is called the first Ekadasi or Toli Ekadasi or Sayanai Kadasi. The Puranas prescribe Gopad Mavrata to be performed on that day. The cow shed should be cleaned and then decorated with rangolis and in the center 33 lotuses must be made with rice flour. Lakshmi and Narayana must be worshipped with sandal paste and akshatas, rice made yellow with turmeric and flowers. After offering circumambulation, 
The brahmanas must be given one gift, vayana, each for every lotus. The cow must be worshipped. The benefits of this are miraculous and really, really miraculous. So we can see how there's so many different rituals that one can perform, so many different uh, actions that one can, one can uh, of offerings they can make to cows and and pleasing uh, gomata, and it brings about peace, prosperity, and also uh, uh, people become spiritually inclined. So, how come in our society they eat the cows and torture the the, the calves? and eat them also, and uh, torture the bulls and eat them. You can say how misleading, or how, how people are being misled, and because of that, there's always trouble. Uh, COVID is only one problem. There's so many other problems in America. There's fires, there are hurricanes, there are earthquakes, there's violence in the streets, there's rioting, there's all kinds of uh, unsavory things we can't even talk about that are happening every day in this country and all around the world. And it's mainly because uh, people don't respect brahmanas, they don't protect cows, and they're engaged in wholesale sinful activity, such as killing their own children, eating the cow, and engaging in all kinds of nonsense sense gratification. So what is the solution to all this? Because if it keeps going like this, there'll be continual spiral downward. The only solution in the age of Kali is Kali Ardusa Nidei Rajan Astihi Eka Mahad Guna Kirtanad Eva Krishnasya Mukta Sangas Param Rajit. There are so many bad qualities in the age of Kali. I call dosas. Dosa doesn't mean the dosa that you eat, but a dosa means, maybe I'm not pronouncing it right, but it do, it's spelled similar. But it's, it means uh, inauspicious things. There's sort of many faults in dosas or dosas in Kali Yuga. But there's one great quality, asti hi eka mahad guna. Kirtanad eva Krishna says, simply by chanting the holy names of Krishna, Mukta Sangha Shajayati, one can easily attain liberation from the cycle of birth and death. So therefore, we should get real serious about performing Harinam Sankirtan, giving everybody a chance to hear the holy name chanted melodiously and with devotion and feeling, and to help people overcome that the dangerous mentality of uh, uh, Kali Yuga, and uh, this is explained in Bhagavad Gita also. Namo Brahmanya Devaya, Go Brahmana Hitaya Cha, Jagatitaya Krishnaya, Govindaya, Namo Namaha. It's in the 14th chapter. Prabhupada writes about this. He says, first of all, this prayer says, My Lord, you are the well wisher of the cows and the Brahmanas, and you are the well wisher of the entire human society and world. It's the Vishnu Purana 1, 1965. The purport is that special mention is given in that prayer for the protection of the cows and the brahmanas. Brahmanas are the simple, the symbol of spiritual education. And cows are the symbol of the most valuable food. These two living creatures, the brahmanas and the cows, must be given all protection. That is real advancement of civilization. In modern human society, spiritual knowledge is neglected and cow killing is encouraged. It is to be understood then that human society is advancing in the wrong direction and is clearing the path to its own condemnation. A civilization which guides the citizens to become animals in their next lives is certainly not a human civilization. The present human civilization is, of course, grossly misled by the modes of passion and ignorance. It is a very dangerous age, and all nations should take care to provide the easiest process, Krishna consciousness, to save humanity from the greatest danger. The greatest danger, your next life you become a worm or a rat 
after being a human being. Can you imagine anything more frightening and, and horrendous? But that's what's going on. Because if you kill cows and eat them, you're definitely going to have a very, very inauspicious next birth. So, therefore, uh, Gomata is our mother. And we should treat her like that. We should treat her as a member of the family. We should care for her. We should be affectionate. And then she'll give uh, very wonderful uh, milk. And she'll be very affectionate. And in that way, uh, we can have peace and prosperity in society. Prosperity means you have ample milk grains, fruits, and vegetables, and you eat sumptuously, and you have no debts, you don't have to buy petroleum, you don't have to buy uh, all kinds of medicines in uh, Walmart or any of those uh, stores. You don't even have to go to the store hardly at all, maybe to buy salt, that's it. The rest you have. You have a few beehives, you have cows, you have some land, you grow your own food, and uh, you live a very simple life, chanting and dancing and feasting. What's wrong with that? Right? If you work four or five months e a year producing the grains and vegetables and you know how to keep them over winter, you, know, you, you have all kinds of survival foods. There, first of all, there's grains and vegetables, and then you have and then some vegetables grow in the winter time, even in severe weather. And then you have also potatoes and pumpkins and squashes. They can be they can be kept over, uh, you know, throughout the winter. And then some of the greens and other things you dry them, and then uh, they you can cook them. And you you don't have you don't need the freezer. And uh, and for uh, power, you have cow dung. And cow dung, you can use that for doing Agnihotram and, and chanting Vedic mantras. And with, with ample milk, you can have milk, you can have yogurt, you can have ghee, you can have paneer. You say. So you eat sumptuously, not gluttonously, not, with, not, not being a glutton, but you eat sumptuously. And you have a simple life, and it's healthy, simple life. And you don't need any cosmetics. Ghee is the best cosmetic in the world, and milk is the best cosmetic in the world. Uh, m many uh, European queens would take bath in milk. Like Josephine, you know, who was that? Napoleon's wife, she's a very beautiful lady. She would bathe in milk and, and put the milk on her face every day, and yogurt also and ghee. So you don't have to buy any of these uh, uh, so-called uh, cosmetics that make your skin youthful. You, you just use the, the cow products, the panchagavyas. And all, almost all diseases can be healed with cow urine. Did you know that? Cow urine is extreme. Cow urine, ghee, and yogurt, basically, you can heal m almost every disease in the world. Of course, no one believes it. And, and by the way, when Krishna was, uh, uh, he, he uh, uh, sucked the breast of uh, Putana and Maria Soda and the other ladies, when they found out it was not a, a beautiful lady, but it was Putana's demon, you know what they did to purify Krishna? They bathed him with cow dung. Did you know that? You read the Krishna way, you see they put cow dung all over, they bathe them because it's, it's, a, it's an antiseptic. Huh? Yeah, did I be shake with cow dung? See, cow dung is a miraculous product. It, it, is, it has so many wonderful uh, qualities, especially uh, uh, in India, right? They, they build homes with uh, cow dung, cow dung and straw. And they, and they purify the home every day with cow dung right? and keep building up its, uh, its thickness. So we should go back to this original way of living. You know, some people say, oh my God, what are you talking about? Are you crazy or what? 
You know, no, we're not crazy. We're, talk we're talking the facts. These are the real facts of life. But that whole society, that whole knowledge is, is almost lost. But we should bring it back and we should demonstrate it. You know, when I tell people about, you know, the, the Vedic village, they say, wow, I'd like to live like that. Not everybody, of course, but uh, <laughs> there are people who say, wow, that's good. I mean, just simple life, grow your own food, have a little bit of land, and, and, and so forth. So it's very important that we understand the cow and the bull are extremely two important persons in society. And when they're mistreated, the society goes off the rails and there's a lot of suffering and misery. So we can change that if we are determined to uh, uh, reinstate the original Vedic culture. Okay. Culture means how you do things. So we should do things according to the original Vedic traditions. Okay, we'll stop right there. See, Prabhupada explains here, he says, the bull and cow can be protected for the good of all human society simply by spreading a Brahminical culture as the topmost perfection of all cultural affairs. So Brahminical culture, uh, that means that samadhamak tapak socham shantir arjvam evacha jnanam vijnanam sayatam brahma karma swabhavajam. So we should, this is Vedic culture. Equanimity and austerity, self control, uh, control the mind and the senses, and cleanliness internally and externally. Internally by chanting Hare Krishna, that's the internal soap, and externally by using cow dung and cow dung products, you know, and urine. And, uh, and then uh, also arita. Arita is soap nut. Uh, it's, it's a natural vegetable soap. You know. And then uh, socham, uh, uh, arjavam, being honest and simple in one's life habits. Uh, and having theoretical knowledge, having practical knowledge, how to put that theoretical knowledge into practice. And in other words, uh, becoming elevated up to the point of uh, being free from the modes of material nature. That's real knowledge. And just being, developing love for Krishna through simple acts uh, of uh, devotion. So. That is the Brahminical culture. So, are there any questions or comments? Yeah, I'm uh, just thinking about <laughs> this, what Prabhupada says here that, you know, um, well, it's just a fact that in Kali Yuga, both bull and a cow are now being slaughtered and eaten up as foodstuffs. I have a contrast. I mean, they're keeping other animals and they're fighting for what they say, the, what they call rescue animals, and then they're eating cows. They rescue the dogs, the cats. Exactly, you yeah. right. It's what a contrast. It's upside down, right? <laughs> Everything is everything's <laughs> opposite to what's right. And they think it's right. They call that right, and eating cows, you know, is not wrong. So. This is a very dangerous time. So he says, it's a very dangerous time. He says, it is to be understood then that human society is advancing in the wrong direction and is clearing the path to its own condemnation. Wow. You see? And, and, we're, and we're, we're a little bit anesthetized. We're a little bit uh, drugged. That we say, well, it's, it's part of life. It's not. No, we, sh we should be outraged. And... We have to do something serious to stop it because, you know, it's like a house on fire with, uh, you know, a whole family inside the house sleeping, you know. You got to wake them up. Otherwise, they're, they're imminently in danger. They're very dangerous. Okay. Uh, that is 14th chapter, 16th verse in the purport. 
Yes. Well, it's due to bad association. Just like, uh, let him tell you his story. Uh, tell your story. <laughs> so he, he's, he's born in a pious Hindu family, right? Yes. Huh? <laughs> Adidev is born in a pious Hindu family in, in Delhi, right? Yes, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yabra uh, Uzo, I, I, I am born in like uh, like Brahman family, so-called like Brahman family. Uh, but uh, we were like, um, uh, due to my grandmother association, we were like uh, vegetarian throughout my life. And uh, Early life, right? Early. Yes. Means I'm still vegetarian. So, so continuously uh, I was in vegetarian. And uh, like especially my mother, grandmother, uh, uh, influence no onion, no garlic as well in my house. Uh, but sometime I was eating uh, onion, garlic outside. Um, so, but as we, as I grow up, um, during my like high school time, uh, due to my other friends' uh, association, uh, they somehow they convinced, uh, let's go out and uh, try meat. <laughs> uh, and uh, unfortunately, I go out and what? Eat meat. Eat meat, yeah. Eat meat. You, you sort of slurred that word. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so go out and eat uh, meat. Uh, so uh, unfortunately, I I, con I got convinced and I went with them. And uh, but as soon as uh, uh, meat got served and they started eating, and uh, when I just tried once, I was not able to eat. It was like so so tough for me and very horrible experience as well. Then I gave up. I said, I cannot try this more. You see, the answer is bad association. And so there's a practical example. They're con trying to convince, the you know, peer pressure. They're trying to convince him, let's go out and have some fun. We'll eat some meat. Right? And if it wasn't for his grandmother, he probably would have liked it. But because his grandmother trained him not to eat meat. When he tasted it, he didn't like it. I say. If he didn't have a grandmother like that, he would, he'd be a meat eater the rest of his life. And he, it was because they, they, they peer pressured him to eat with them. You want to be one of us, you've got to eat meat with us. They do the same thing for marijuana. They do the same thing for sex. It's, it's all going on today. Every day it's happening all over the country. Young kids are being contaminated. In fact, they're trying to pass a law right now, it's, it's, it's on the ballot right now, to teach about homosexuality in first grade in every public school in Washington State. So it's not just people, it's the government itself. They teach it already in fifth grade, but they want to go down to first grade. Probably, they probably will teach it in kindergarten next. You know. So the whole thing is nonsense, it's bad association. You know, and, and subjecting our kids to that type of association is very dangerous. Look what they were trying to do to him. That's in high school, right? And that's a true story, but not, no exaggeration. Haribo, anybody else? Yes. Huh? It's far from the mic. Microphone, come, microphone. Come closer. We, we need the cordless one, baby. Yeah. So uh, the purport Prabhupada says, and you also mentioned Maharaj, when the bull and cows are in joyful mood, it used to be understood that people in the world are also in joyful mood. So that is now. What, what does it say? Wait a minute. Uh, it's um, okay. Are in a joyful mood is to be understood that the people of the world are also in a joyful mood. Joyful mood. So, yeah. so like I. I'll tell you, I'll, I'll give you an example. Yesterday at the farm, this one Indian lady comes to feed the cows. And she brings her son with her also. So they fed the cows. And afterwards she said, is there any service I can do for the cow? So the other devotee said, yeah, we, we have to clean the barn. So, oh, let me do it, please. She got down on her knees 
<laughs> cleaned the whole barn, cleaned the stool. Right? Why? Because she is a traditional Hindu. And this is what they do. This, is, this was part, she, she still has that culture the, of, of serving the cow. Gomata. I see it almost every day now. People are coming. Uh, the other day, another family I never saw before they came. And they specifically came so the ladies could circumambulate the cow. This book explains all those things with scriptural uh, uh, quotes. You see? So that's the traditional culture of India, and it's being lost. It's being lost. It's still there a little bit, but it's, 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 it's quickly going away. And imagine America with nothing like that is present. I was speaking to this one Armenian family a year or two ago, and uh, uh, I, we met, I met them at uh, Ananda Mela, and uh, I invited them to come to the farm. So the first time they came, the husband bought a big wild bottle of uh, brandy uh, made in Armenia, you know, nice label on it, and nice ribbons and everything. He thought he was going to make friends with me by giving it to him. So he gives it to me, and he's really proud that he, he gave it to me. And I said, no, I don't want it. He said, what? <laughs> he was like shocked. I said, no, I don't, I don't drink. He said, what? You don't drink? But it's good for you, he said. <laughs> 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 and then, you know, and, and he's, he's a you know, hard, hardcore meat eater, right? So one day, I, one time I was speaking to his wife, and his wife said that her husband's mother was a vegetarian in Armenia. And, and every time they go to her house, she, try, she would only give vegetarian food. She would never eat meat. I said, see, it's in your family. How come you're eating meat? And they said, oh, well, we don't believe in that. And see, how, how there's, there's a, even in places where there's traditional meat eating, there are people who, the older people, never ate meat. It's not only in India. And this whole culture has changed all over the world. Pe peasants before, people lived in villages, they very seldom ate meat because they're not going to eat the cow that's giving them milk. They're not going to eat the bull that's, that's plowing the field, right? They might eat, you know, chicken or, uh, or uh, 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 a lamb or a goat, but they're not going to eat the cow and the bull. They were so essential for, the, for, the, for their life, you know, say. So the whole culture has changed all over the world. Go ahead, what were you gonna say? So my question, I guess, was more in terms of 